is up guys McIntyre here bringing you yet another YouTube video today we are going to be talking about Nazebo he has recently been changed his kit has been changed a little bit just the way that the spells operate and his talents for the most part have all been altered so I wanted to go over the new and improved Nazebo talk about his abilities talk about how they synergize and then go over a build and obviously provide a gameplay afterwards talking a little more about him and you know his position within the meta of the game currently so we're gonna talk about the abilities first and then i'm gonna go over the talents um so the first thing that i think i just want to talk about with nazebo that is super important is now he no longer deals damage when you throw q unless it hits so the circle has to hit the person in order for it to deal damage as you can see here if i throw my q out and it hits nothing well i, I hit it there but if i throw my q out and it hits nothing then it will not provide any damage for me. And like I did before, if it barely hits it, as long as it hits, the vase will break and the spiders will be spawned. So this is the first thing I think about Nazebo that a lot of people are, aren't are doing correctly and is making him feel weaker than he really is. Um, so that's the first thing I want to kind of go over. So how do we keep this from, you know, how, how do we keep ourselves from missing this? So the first way is obviously just to hold it until the person comes at you. So a lot of times melee heroes will walk at you. And when they do that, that's when you want to throw it, right? You have a better chance of hitting it when they come at you than throwing it max range. The second way is going to be if you have a stun tank, just like a Lee Min Q would do, a Nazebo waits for the stun tank to engage, then you follow up with Q. You're not just throwing randomly like you used to in Nazebo. You used to just kind of like just like throw stuff at the enemy and it was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm doing tons of damage." But as you can see here, I just threw a bunch of stuff and no damage was done to the dummy because I missed everything before you could get away with that. Um, the next and third option for landing your Q is just going to be the zombie wall. The zombie wall is going to create a wall around the person, but once they're walled, you throw your Q and it's pretty much impossible to miss, right? Same goes for your frogs. If you hit the zombie wall, you can throw them both, right? Now your toad is going to hit, okay? Um, so that that's the other change. Obviously, zombie wall is, is the exact same. You create a wall, uh, you know, and then you can reactivate it to drop the wall in case you catch your team. Please do this. If your team's in it, the enemy's not. Drop the wall immediately. Don't let the person sit there and look like you're a terrible player because if you don't drop the wall, then you are a terrible player. So you should feel bad. Uh, yeah. So going on to the third talent again. Now we have toads. They used to come out a bit thinner too or yeah so now like the toads are really wide they go really wide the two outside go really wide and the middle kind of still does the straight line so you'd get two charges of this and the change to that they made to this was that it applies a dot so if i hit one i'll get one dot of the poison and if i go up in melee i'll get three right so the the change to this was that before you, I, I would call them shotgun frogs. You could, you could, you know, kind of go right up to the person and frog them and hit them with all the frogs and it would do a lot of burst. Now it does a good amount of dot. Um, a cool thing with the frogs too that a lot of people don't know is when you have walls and stuff, you can kind of grind the frogs against the walls and then they'll run together, right? So if you are, say, bending around this corner and someone's chasing you, you can grind the frogs around the corner and they stack so now you know if i if this is let's imagine this is a hero i can for the most part kind of bend them around that corner at the person in a stack of three okay All right so that's a pretty cool thing that a lot of people don't know about the frogs and i'm just gonna call it grinding because it's kind of like grinding a rail with a skateboard except you're grinding the outside walls of objects. And this works for all objects, buildings, keeps, walls, you know, the whole shebang, right? Um, so yeah, so so if you're getting chased, you can, you can do that to get like big, big frog damage on a single target, which is really cool. But yeah, so it's just dot damage. This is mostly gonna be your wave clear talent on top of your, your spiders. So, you know, if you walk up, as you can see, it just kind of melts away the minions, right? Uh, yeah, and it doesn't really cost a lot of mana. It only costs 30. It's 
pretty cool. Pretty cool little talent. You're you're not you're gonna deal damage with this, but you're not gonna really feel it. This is this is Nazebo's kind of invisible damage, but you want to get it out because it's important. Um, so now we're gonna talk about talents, and now that we've basically gone over the basic kit, we're talking about talents and the synergy and why we're taking them. So level one, we're gonna be taking Widowmakers. This is your corpse fighters. After they attack a hundred times, their attack damage is gonna be increased by thirty percent. So if you take this talent and you land a Q on somebody as you can see the bottom left you get four attacks out of each spider you have three spiders so you're gonna get 12 stacks so you only have to hit this nine times you know obviously sometimes the people get away from your spiders so they you know it's like 10 9 to like 13 times i want to say if you hit a q then you'll get your stacks uh it's really good on like cursed hollow when someone's trying to channel and you throw your q out there you can get a lot of damage in uh, I don't think it's impossible to, you, I, I guess, I don't think it's impossible to not take Thing of the Deep too. I think this talent is still pretty good at level one. On maps like Towers of Doom and even like Curse Hollow, it can be a really strong talent because you can throw your, pat, you can kind of throw your Q from really far away and, and still hit the enemy. So it is something to think about, but if you want the most damage, this is the talent you want to be taking. Um, at four, we're going to take Big Voodoo. This is going to increase the bonuses from my passive uh, by 100%. So instead of, you know, f four, I, I should get eight, right? Let me see. Let me just do this really quick. Okay, yeah, so, so, so now my health We'll go up by eight. I'm gonna do it one more time. I, you gotta actually look down here to see it. There you go. So it went from 68 to 76. I was like, wait, wait, it didn't go up by, it only went up by four. Yeah, so the bonuses that you get, although they show base, they kind of are represented within your pool on the left side. So yeah, every time you would get eight, four, every time you get four health, you'll get eight on your actual health bar so it's a really good talent obviously throughout the game nazebo is going to continue to scale because of this and now doubling up on your raw stats is just a really insane for the hero so i really like this talent at four i, I don't really think anything else is is good enough um but seven we're now going to be taking dead rush the reason that we take dead rush is because of the zombies after the wall so when i wall someone for the most part people stand in the middle and the zombies won't damage them but when they come out of the ground if you look at the damage meters at the bottom right they just randomly do a thousand six hundred damage you know obviously i'm level 21 at this point but it's a lot of damage like at level 21 i am i have three thousand seven hundred damage as a range carry so that's half of my health right just randomly and it's i can't get away from it so it's a really cool talent and it's gonna also just increase the damage of the wall so if for whatever reason you know the people are running into your wall which they sometimes do then your wall will deal damage and then it'll continue to do damage <clears throat> and most of the time people are going to hit your wall because they want to get out of it so they are going to take a little more damage so that's two thousand Again, that's more than 50% of my health that I have right now. Uh, the next synergistic talent and ultimate that we're going to be taking, or heroic, is going to be Gargantuan. And the reason we take this over Ravnus is because when we hit our wall Q combo, so the, you know, the wall and then Q, right? When we hit this combo, we're going to want to follow it up with a Gargantuan. So we're going to increase that damage even more now, right? We throw the wall, we throw a Q, we throw a Gargantuan. Again, gargantuan punches. Yeah, and now the damage meters are starting to really add up. You know, we're at we're at like six thousand by the time that the wall and all the summons dropped. The gargantuan's gonna keep punching, but it's a lot of damage if you put everything out onto the person. Okay, so it works really well because you also guarantee a slam from gargantuan because of the zombie wall if it connects so really cool it's also a good talent just to protect you and kite melees for the most part so looking at 13 talents now we have two that are both really powerful the first being superstition this is just going to give you a permanent spell shield at the sacrifice of 30 percent bonus damage from autos because of the meta right now like a lot of the time you're going to see compositions that just don't have autoers. 
and it'll be like mage you know like right now especially it's like double support double tank some sort of carry and if that carry just so happens to be Li Ming and you're Nazebo, like you're just laughing because the other team's not going to do any damage to you because of superstition. But on the off chance that the other team has a very impactful ultimate or something that can kill you, and or you know, or they have a lot of basic attack like Butcher and Illidan, even like Rainer, you know, Ice Block is probably the better talent to take here. I don't really like Guardian Toads. You have to hit the Toad; it's already difficult enough, but. Ice Block will buy you three seconds. It might cancel an ultimate, right? So if you're getting hit by Nova, she's using triple tap. You just Ice Block and it immediately cancels. Um, you know, if you are again getting nova and she pinning shots you and she goes to precision, just Ice Block it, walk away. Um, yeah, it's like, it's just, it's really good. You're getting charged by Butcher. Uh, he's about to hit you. Ice Block it. You know, he... He throws his Lamb of the Slaughter, Ice Block it. Yeah, you get the picture. You guys know how to use Ice Block, I think, hopefully. If not, you just learned something. But that's how Ice Block is used, and that's why you can sometimes take it on a Zeba, because doing that will win you a fight. And now the best talent about him, for me, is going to be Ring of Poison. So while your wall is going on, the inside of it is filling with poison. It's going to do even more damage. So... If you guys watch now, if I wall, I'm going to wall so that I have a couple zombies hitting him and then I'm going to do all my damage. So now, after the wall drops, I've done 8,000 damage. And obviously I can auto more, I could play, I could throw more toads. There's a lot more that I could be doing, but all of that damage is still there, right? Wow, Nazebo actually takes his hat off. That's really weird. Um, yeah, so that's like where all of your damage, that's where if you hit that kind of combo on somebody, they're just going to die, right? They're just going to die out. It's so much damage. Most of the time, they they just can't survive it. Um, and it's all going to come full circle when you go Humangoid at 20. So this is going to decrease your Gargantuan's cooldown to 20 seconds and your zombie walls on a 14 second cooldown so without toggling cooldowns at all now if i hit the zombie wall right and my gargantuan starts punching stuff and we're fighting okay we're fighting you know we're still fighting gargantuan's punching them right when this thing drops it's back up and i don't have toggle cooldowns so you more or less get 100% uptime on Gargantuan with the ability to move its position because now it's turret based, right? So it's like Gazlo's ultimate, or I mean, it's like Gazlo's turrets and the fact that it only hits things in its circle. So you can kind of keep the circle moving, okay? Or you can just summon him right on top of your zombie wall. Which is also really powerful. Okay, so it's 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 just really versatile. I think it's the better of the twenty talents. Even though Vile Infection is pretty sweet, and Fury of the Storm can be really good at wave clearing. You already have a lot of wave clear because your base kit. Here you have to get one hundred fifty stacks. Sometimes you can't do that, um, but here it's like summoning Gargantuan all the time. I think it's just where you want to be at on this hero. So with all that coming together again, you're gonna see it in game. But I'm going to look to really connect with the Qs. This is the most important part. If my Qs aren't connecting, I'm not doing a lot of damage. And I'm going to look to zombie wall off of things. I'm not just going to... I can zombie... I can raw zombie. Like, if the other team's running up through here and I zombie wall this, then they can't get past it, right? So you might see me do that. But for the most part, I want to wait on, you know, a, a Thrall Wolf... Um, a Murden stun, a Joanna pool, something that's going to cause the other team CC and then follow up with the zombie wall, right? That's what you're going to be looking for in these games and then follow that up with a Q, follow that up with a Gargantuan. Or if I'm going to get to melee, I'll wait until they come into me. And then when they come into me, I'll throw my Q, I'll throw my zombie wall. Um, yeah. It's like a lot of the synergy comes from putting all of his abilities together rather than before where he would just spew out 
all of his abilities whenever he like could and he was doing the most damage that he could be doing right this is the difference heroes has changed a little bit i still think he's really powerful again i'll see you guys in the gameplay and you'll see a lot more and learn a lot more there so uh yep hopefully you enjoy the gameplay so we are hopping into this game today i'm going to be playing with tiger and trap queen tiger currently being one of my teammates um he actually got me to play quick match instead so this game's going to be a little different just even looking at the compositions now uh, i'm gonna have to deal with illidan kerrigan nova as nazebo without a tank we are fortunate that we do have Medivh so we can get shielded, but Nova is actually fairly difficult for Nazebo to deal with because of her invisibility. And obviously Illidan and Kerrigan are going to be jumping at me. I'm going to have to take Ice Block this game and just Ice Block when they jump at me. gonna take widow makers too I, I don't really need thing of the deep because again their team's gonna be coming at me so i want to get out as much damage as possible but i do want to right off the start start looking for stacks on the minion waves with nazebo he's the only hero in the game where it's important to actually like oh man or it's important to actually get your uh, not not necessarily last hits but you want to apply your poison onto everything man wait this game is a bloodbath right now uh, i'm gonna head bottom i want to get to turn the sound seems a little loud Louder than usual. Okay, so I'm gonna stay down here and just knock out one more wave. I think it's okay to wall. This way. Okay, yeah, so Nova had to come down. Remember that with Nazebo too, like at any time, I can just go and knock out a camp as well. Because Nazebo has such a good, like, PvE. I don't want to miss those. Oh. Might be in trouble, guys. I, I think I ended up killing Vala there. <laughs> but, okay. It's more important that I'm alive than Vala. <clears throat> because I can get, like, more health off of these minions. Oh god. I went to juke back but couldn't because of the Illidan. Oh man. We're crumbling. <laughs> Illidan Malfurion is such a good combo. If you guys are looking for really strong two person combos, that's a that's a really good one because Malfurion's root can't be missed basically. And then because he has follow up root, then Kerrigan's combo is really easy. Plus, Kerrigan has many issues, and Alfurion fixes that with his passive. Oh, this guy didn't move at all when I threw my spiders. He stood still. I just can't play up into the lane, I guess. With their team, I need to play back a little more passive. Which is fine. But I'm not looking to shove, necessarily. be able to kill all of that <clears throat> so i just need to really just push and then rotate push and then rotate see kerrigan mid so i should be able to stay up here a little bit longer because kerrigan's mid but the second she leaves i do have to be careful illidan and kerrigan both <clears throat> basically 
kill me. Kerrigan, less so. Um, if I can, like, juke Kerrigan's combo and then wall, then I can actually get a lot of damage on her. Like, she's tanking my spiders here. Yeah, like that, for example. If I can juke... her combo and then get a wall on her with the spiders and I can just kill her should be able to get mop up the rest of the wave there <laughs> that moment when like Kerrigan drops a stun on that. Oh, close. I think Ed won for the kill. I want to try to get this camp. See how fast I can really do it. I think I should be able to do it fast enough. <clears throat> I'm going to tap after. Like, I don't have a lot of mana right now, but I'll tap right after. It takes me a little bit longer than I thought it would originally. I think until you get the poison gas, it takes a while. <coughs> oh, man. I think my, I'm letting my team down here. <laughs> I can get the first this break. Oh god. Shields, heals. Am I gonna live? Nope. Nova hit the snipe on me, or just a basic attack me. Oh, she has anti armor shells. I was like, oh, she sniped me. It's not too bad though, three for two. I think I got a lot of damage out on Kerrigan there. If I had Gargantua in this fight, it would have been a huge deal because Garg would have just been punching away at the Kerrigan. Oh, pick up the kill. Nice. Alright, so two for four now. And I got that pumpkin camp out, and I got value top. So I'm going to get back onto that grind. This camp's in 10 seconds, so by the time I get there, it should be up. I'm doing really good on passive. I'm already at bonus, like, almost 600 health. And my spiders are getting there. Obviously, the more team fights I get into, the, the more value I'm going to get out of that. <clears throat> kind of soaking off lanes isn't going to really get you stacks. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'll take it. I'll take it. Three for one? <laughs> that reminded me of um, Watchmen. I can't think of who the... Nar... What's his name? I want to say it's Narshak, but I know that's so wrong. But he, there's the prison scene where he's like, you're not... I'm not stuck in here with you. You're stuck in here with me. That, that was what that felt like. <laughs> oh, goodness, Ed. Although the whole team was coming at me, I was just swatting people. They didn't end up going down to a Nova snipe, which stinks, but... Is Hunt OP on this map? I don't think so, Ed. So I'm going to get back to the stacks again. If 
I can push this out, then I can start doing the camp as well. Oh, they just did the camp. Oh, it was a Nova too, because you bribed it. Oh, it's not good. I should be able to ice block this now. I should be able to ice block there, um, like the hunt and precision strike. So now, if I drop like my wall and do all that stuff when Illidan jumps in, right as he connects with me, I can ice block and he'll be stuck in with me. I was talking about before with like you wall where they're going not like actually walling them and so I walled the door there and the Zebo couldn't walk through the door we didn't really have the follow-up at the moment but we almost had enough damage to kill him there There is the ice block on the combo. I don't think that guy. <laughs> so again, sometimes with the cooldown based teams, it's better, it's better to take the ice block, right? This would be a good example of that. I have so much uh I have so much passive right now. You remember in the video I was level 21 and I had like 3600 health. I have 4k and I'm at 16 right now. Killing it. I think this guy's trying to get the globe. Yeah. I'm gonna go do this camp. <clears throat> now a lot of the time too, you guys are probably seeing in these team fights, I'm holding on to my zombie wall. It's really important. That I don't just throw it out immediately. I want to kind of look to where the other team is going and then zombie wall kind of accordingly, right? So if they're walking like between these two buildings and I want a zombie wall there. I don't, I'm not just throwing it out just to throw it out there, you know, like, oh, their mouth's standing here. I'll just throw it right here and he'll get caught. It's like, I want to put my wall where they're going and kind of anticipate where they'll be. That way, I have a higher percentage of hitting the wall, right? Like, see where I put the zombie wall there, right? I put the zombie wall a little to like the left, like Nazebo would see me and then react to me. And by doing so, he walked right into it. And then I got full a full zombie, like spider gargantuan combo off on him. And I think he's even running superstition, which is why it felt like not so powerful, but that's another reason why Vala is just tearing him up though, because he went superstition. I always feel like I'm like playing like a single player game when I play Nazebo. Especially after the seven talent, just having all the stuff like all the zombies like fighting camps with you. It's, you are not prepared. Just keep getting out these camps. It's unfortunate this guy's protecting them right now, but I'm gonna go mess with this Kerrigan. 
Yeah, I don't want to throw anything. I I don't even want to for like me showing up forces the Kerrigan's hand. Uh, see, now I've messed up. I'm gonna guard though. She maelstromed. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, Nova. I was uh, out of position there. I played too far for the too forward for the keep. Once I ice block too, I was like dead to the Nova. But notice how I ice block when Maelstrom pops. It basically makes Maelstrom dead, and then the Kerrigan has to fight Gargantuan because I put Garg on top of me. So it's like wastes her time. And she ends up, you know, not going for it. The unfortunate part was that Nova showed up and then just popped me and killed me. <laughs> 2,000 damage. And she's playing the bug build, of course. So is everyone else. Blizzard really needs to fix that. Oh my goodness. Zombie Wombo. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, the bribe the bribe talent's really good too, honestly, because you you get it at four. It doesn't it doesn't even bother your seven, which normally you would go follow through. But I guess if you aren't good at like rotating your skills for your autos, the anti armor is pretty good there too. I still have Ice Walk up if Kerrigan wants to fight me. Hmm. Monk's crazy. Their whole team is right here. And Monk just used Palm. I don't get it. I'm gonna give him a Q to get out. Dang. Almost. could I probably could have leveled that to save my Gargantuan. I thought they were doing boss too. This guy should be dead. Nice ults, guys. Oh, shoot. I got a little dicey. You think I get hunted if I show up here? Probably. I don't have ice block either. If Nova like showed up here and just snipe me, I think I'm dead. I can't be walking around without much health, man. We are at MS5. Oh, we're about to get triple keeped. Oh no. Oh no. We need to kill this. I'm about to guard and use everything to kill this. I have to. Oh no. This has to die. Okay. They're suiciding? Gosh, having 5,000 health is killing it right now. Oh! We saved it. We're at one, guys. I need to go mid. I need to go mid right now. Oh my god, I need to get mid. Oh my gosh, we're at one. And the comeback be real. <clears throat> I like how the Nova Illidan have this partnership where Illidan hunts and the Nova ultimates, but like I keep ice blocking it. Oh no. Can it actually be close?
they're killing my guards back up in five seconds. Should be able to. Mm, this is gonna be really hard. I want to. I, I don't think it matters. It doesn't actually matter. It doesn't matter if we kill that or not. What we have to be careful for is the Kerrigan combo here. But we do have to also play up as well. Mm. I think that's all she wrote, guys. Way too much melee into way too much range. The blessing of quick match. But, I mean, as you can see there, if our team comp wasn't, like, super duper nasty, uh, I think that game would have gone a lot better for us. And I, I don't think that any of the team fights I didn't do, I wasn't effective, you know? I still think, I think Nazebo is really strong. This would actually be a bad composition for him to be against as well, because... Actually, not too bad. It wasn't too bad. If we had a tank, I think my game would have been way different. Their front line, their, their two melees just could suicide into ours. <clears throat> Our um, <clears throat> really squishy triple range. <clears throat> and then it looks like Kerosene went no cleanse as well. So once you got Kerrigan combo, that was all she wrote. But I, I hope you guys learned a little bit from this. Kind of my... Team fighting, like I talked about, if melee comes into me, then I fight the melee. Um, I didn't really have the ability. There was absolutely zero CC on my team. So following up any form of CC was actually impossible this game. So you really just saw me throwing raw zombie walls, which is sometimes good. Like I hit a couple of them, but it's just not near as effective as like having any form of CC. Meanwhile, the other team has bugged Nova that's just slowing everybody by 70% on a six second cooldown. That's tough. That's really tough. It was a tough game, but hopefully you guys learned a little bit from it. Um, you take some things and apply them to your own Nazebo gameplay, um, and you enjoy this new Nazebo build. I think my favorite part about it is just that you can reposition Gargantuan, basically, and he's up all the time. And if the other team kills him, it's not like before where permanent Gargantuan, the other team killed him, and then, you know, if you had waited 120 seconds, you recast him. In this case, you just get him every 20 seconds, so... I really like that about that's probably my favorite part about Nazebo, honestly. If you've ever seen my streams, uh, I always scream about Gary the Gargantuan. So, but I'm out of here, guys. If you did enjoy, please make sure to throw a like and follow on this video. You can always follow me on Twitch and Twitter, which will both be located below, as well as check out my tier list, which I will also link in the description as well. So, thank you guys again so much, and I will see you all next video.